Hi everyone, Dan here, and welcome to part two of our 32-bit float explainer. In this video, I'll be looking at the practical applications of 32-bit float and showing a full walkthrough of the 32-bit float recording workflow. Now, if you missed the first part of this series, there's a link to it in the description below. In that video, I explain what 32-bit float is and how it works. So I recommend checking that out if you haven't already. 32-bit float is a clever technology that uses multiple digital converters and combines their output into a 32-bit float bitstream. This means you capture the full output from the microphone capsule with no compromises. Whether you are recording the quietest sound or the loudest one, you will always get an optimal recording without having to worry about setting the gain before you hit record. It's a bit like shooting RAW on a camera. RAW captures the full information from the image sensor for maximum flexibility in post-production. 32-bit float captures the full information from the microphone capsule delivering optimal audio in every situation. However, just as capturing raw video won't improve the image sensor's inherent low light or color performance, 32-bit float won't magically make a poor quality microphone sound great. You still need a professional microphone that has a very low noise floor, can handle high SPLs, and has a full frequency response. The circuitry that delivers the 32-bit float bitstream also has to be carefully designed to avoid non-linearities that can cause audible artifacts. So beware cheap products on the market that claim 32-bit float performance. The garbage in, garbage out rule still applies even for 32-bit float. To demonstrate 32-bit float recording, I'm using the NT1 fifth generation microphone. This microphone has an exceptionally low noise floor of just 4 dBA, and this is the quietest studio condenser microphone in the world, and means it excels at capturing very quiet sounds. It also boasts a high SPL handling of 132 dB, so it's able to handle the very loudest sources. With its wide frequency response and warm, detailed sound, it is a fantastic microphone for all types of recording. The NT1 fifth generation is more than just a great studio microphone, however. Using our proprietary dual connect output, it has a full 32-bit float conversion system built into the microphone. This uses four stacked converters, carefully matched and combined to deliver a 32-bit float bitstream, which you can connect to your computer directly using a USB-C cable. There is a USB-C port directly built into the XLR connector, making it very easy to use in either XLR studio mode or in digital 32-bit float mode. Now, right now, I've got the USB-C output connected to this computer, where I'm able to capture the 32-bit float bitstream using a regular DAW. Now, to do this demonstration, we've come here to Studio 301 in Sydney. This is the premier recording studio in Australia and ranks among the top 10 recording studios in the world. Now, the reason we've come here to their famous Studio One recording room is because to demonstrate this microphone and the quality you can achieve, we need to be somewhere very quiet. And this room has a noise floor of just 20 dBA. Now, to do this demonstration, I'm going to record something that's very quiet, followed by something very loud. So first of all, I'm going to whisper into this microphone and then I'm going to shout. Now, in a normal recording workflow, I'd start off by doing a sound check. I'd put the mic in front of my mouth, I'd speak how I was going to speak and adjust the gain to match the sound of my voice. But with 32-bit float, I do not need to do that. I can just hit record and be confident my recording will be perfect. And that's a really amazing feature that is a huge benefit to all creators. Now, let's do that. So I've clicked record, and now I'm recording the 32-bit float output from this microphone. And you can see on my DAW screen, the audio recording is proceeding. So the levels actually look quite good at the moment for me speaking in my normal voice at this kind of distance to the microphone. But what happens if I start to whisper? coming from the 
camera that we're using to record this video and in this very very quiet studio it, it's amazingly that I can actually hear that. So that's something very quiet let's try something a bit louder. So now I'm talking very loudly in fact I'm shouting into this microphone and looking at my DAW I can see my audio is clipping terribly um, things are really not looking very good at all. So let's stop our recording and see what we've captured. Now you can see the first section of the recording uh, where I was speaking normally kind of looks fine but then there's a section um, where I was whispering and the level is much too low and you can see the section at the end where I was shouting as clipped horribly as it was very loud. But what I'm going to do is just take that section where I was whispering and do a simple normalization to raise the level. So let's do that. And as you can see, the level on that audio has now been brought up and we can see the waveform quite clearly. Now you can do that in a normal 24-bit workflow, but if you do that with a regular recording and boost the gain of a quiet recording in post-production, what happens is that your noise floor will come up as well. And generally, boosting the level of a quiet sound in post-production introduces a lot of noise and hiss into your recording. But with 32-bit float, that's not the case. We've captured the output of the microphone capsule with no compromises, and we can raise the gain in post-production without raising the noise floor. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. So now I'm speaking very, very quietly into this microphone and listening to the sound in the room. What I can actually hear is a slight whir, which is coming, or buzz, which is coming from the camera that we're using to record this video. And in this very, very quiet studio, it, it's amazingly, I can actually hear that. Wow, that is quite incredible. In this very, very quiet room, you really can hear every little thing that's going on. And because the noise floor of this microphone is so low, don't forget, this is the quietest condenser studio microphone in the world. You can really hear everything in the room with no background noise or hiss coming from the recording system. Quite remarkable. Now, let's have a look at this second section where I was shouting, which looks like a bit of a disaster. Um, my audio is quite clipped. And again, in a normal recording workflow, this audio would be ruined. There's really not a lot you can do when your audio is clipping that badly. But with 32-bit float, of course, I can adjust the gain in post-production. So let's normalize that part of the clip to bring down the gain. As you can see, the levels have been brought down and all of the audio information has been restored. In a normal recording workflow, even if I pull down the level of something that's clipped, it will still sound distorted. But with 32-bit float, because we recorded the full output from the microphone capsule, all of the audio information is there and can be recovered. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. So now I'm talking very loudly. In fact, I'm shouting into this microphone and looking at my DAW, I can see my audio is clipping terribly. Um, things are really not looking very good at all. It sounds amazing that I can shout like that, see the recording clipping that much, and then recover all that audio and have it just sound perfect. It's quite, quite amazing. So just as a reminder, both those two clips were recorded into the same microphone with no adjustment to the recording levels or the gain. I just plug the microphone into the computer and hit record. And we could record a very quiet sound and a very loud one without having to change any of the settings while still getting an optimal result. And for all the technical details and complexities of 32-bit float, this is at the heart of why 32-bit float audio revolutionizes the audio workflow. It frees you from having to manage gain settings and recording levels and allows you to concentrate on making great content, knowing that your audio will always sound clean and clear. Now, if you want to try editing 32-bit float audio files yourself, there's a link in the description below where you can download a number of example files, including the one I showed you here. 
they were all recorded with this microphone and will help you understand how 32-bit float recording could be valuable in your workflow. Thanks everyone and happy recording.